And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite, maker of all types of spark plugs, including sensational Autolite resistor spark plugs and dependable Autolite stay full batteries. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars and trucks, bumpers and hubcaps, radiator grills and ornaments, bullseye seal beam headlights, ignition systems, spark plugs, batteries, fuel pumps, windshield wipers, instruments and gauges, wire and battery cable, and many more. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Isolated facts were known. A beautiful lady suddenly and forever takes the veil, and a gentleman has found one morning a hopeless, gibbering idiot. Coincidence? Perhaps. She was the ornament of the London season, Lady Sannox. More enchanting than Mrs. Langtry, more charming than even Ellen Terry. And all of Mayfair was talking about her. If she were not Lady Sannox, no one would speak to her. No woman, at any rate. But doesn't Lord Sannox know? The poor husband never knows. Lord Sannox is like the, the first little monkey, sees no evil, the blind, doting fool. Reggie was at Cambridge with him, saw him breaking a horse one day. He said there was nothing foolish about that. And he found her in a music hall, didn't he? <laughs> Made her a lady. In name only. And it wasn't a music hall, it was his own amateur dramatic society. You'll excuse me, I'm going to speak to Lady Sannox a minute. By Jove, yes, I remember now. Cast himself in all the lover's parts in order to woo her. <laughs> Mrs. Sannox, I'm so thrilled. His Highness is contented to see the performance. Oh, you could persuade your husband to act again. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Bellander. He's no longer interested in acting. He prefers other things now. Oh, really? What? Orchids. Chrysanthemum to the country. Oh, a talent as great as Sir Henry Irving's. What a pity. We're doing Othello. He'd be simply magnificent in it. In what role? Why, Othello, of course. Oh, I should hardly have thought that that suited him exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Mr. Stone. What time is it? About 10.30. Oh, He's late, isn't he? Will you excuse me, Lady Sannox? Dudley Stone, the most brilliant young surgeon in London, throwing away his career for a strumpet. Oh, hush, my dear. Remember, you're the strumpet's guest. He'll go the way of all his predecessors. Reggie said their number is legion. Watch now, watch. Will you excuse me? You promised. My dearest, I'm most frightfully sorry. I was detained by an emergency in the operating room. Did your patient die? As a matter of fact, he did. For two minutes. They all declared it was a miracle because suddenly the heart began to beat again. But were you terrified? Certainly not. But if your hand had so much as trembled... But you see, my dear, my hand didn't tremble. 
It never does. Oh. By the way, I brought you a little token. An apology for my party. Oh, let me see. Oh, Douglas. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's very pretty. Don't put it on now. Why not? It will be noticed and remarked upon. Oh, are you ashamed? Don't be scared. Oh, you're afraid. <laughs> Clasp for me now. Is that you, Arthur? What are you doing lurking out there in the dark? Forgive me for intruding, my dear, Mr. Stone. I merely wish to say good night. Good night to the room full of guests. Are you mad? I hardly think my absence will be remarked. Where are you going? To the country again, I suppose. Yes, my dear. At this hour. I shall be there before midnight. Oh, I presume your orchids are ailing. They sent you a message of distress. I do worry about them. Like a doctor. They're my patients. Oh, you silly. I'm sure Mr. Stone understands. Fortunate patients. It's quite clear why they always take first pride. Oh, thank you very much. You must let me show you through my greenhouses sometime. I should be delighted. When? Oh, Douglas. You do carry politeness too far. When will you have me? Ah, uh, are you serious? Quite. You see, my dear, Mr. Stone and I have a taste for loveliness in common. Uh, shall we say Sunday next? In the morning. Oh, yes, yes, Father. Well, I shall be there. Well, uh, you do my poor flowers great honor. Uh, well, good night, How long will you be gone? Oh, ten days, perhaps longer. Uh, till Sunday next, Mr. Stone. I shall find you in some orchids, my dear. Till Sunday next, Mr. Stone, have you taken leave of your senses? Father, we'll discuss it later when the guests have gone. Uh, oh, will you excuse us, ladies, Alex? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, Sir Arthur. In view of your spectacular record, the Royal College of Surgeons is more than willing to close one eye. We're none of us saints. No one objects to a man having a private life. So long as it remains private. Rot? What you say? I said rot! The Royal College of Surgeons without me would be a laughing stock. Who's that? Where? In there with Lady Sanic. He gave her a note. Who is he? My poor obsessed colleague. I don't have any idea. Good night. But we laugh, and they say they've had a lovely evening, and I thank them so much for coming. Oh, uh, champagne. Would you care to show me that note? What note? The note I saw him give to Oh, you've been spying. If you like, give it me. Well, with pleasure. <laughs> Who is he, Marion? Oh, my dear Douglas, I have no idea of telling you. He's handsome, though, isn't he? Oh, he's handsome, and he's dark. And he's fallen. Will you show me that note? Let us understand one thing, my beloved. I cannot be owned. I cannot be spied upon, questioned, and ordered about. My husband learned this with some difficulty. And I'm afraid you must do the same. You forget, my dear, that I love you. You are not unique. But you're very exciting. And I love to be loved. My dearest. Oh, dear. There. Well? There it is. Take it then, take it. Now we shall see. Go on, read it. Read it out loud. Charming lady. Oh, go on, read it with an accent. Drive by the third lion at Trafalgar Square at midnight tonight in a hansom with the shades drawn. I shall be waiting. 
Will you answer him? Mm, no. Will you meet him? Well, I might. Of course, that depends on your behavior. I shall meet him. Splendid. Oh, but he's jealous, too. Too? Mm, he hates you. He promised me that he'd kill you for me if I so much as raised my little finger. Shall I raise my little finger, Douglas? If you care to. Oh, how I should love to be Salome and have your head brought to me on a silver plate. And I believe you would. Now will you go to him? Will you? Oh, what do you think? I think not. Oh, my beloved. I tease you only because I cannot have you with me always. I'm afraid to lose you. And I think I must make you jealous to hold you. But if you were my wife... If I were your wife... Will you be? Oh, Douglas. Will you marry me? Will you? Oh, my love. What of Arthur? One cannot divorce so simply in England. And I'm aware of that. But I must know, would you marry me if you could? I would. Then give me your oath. What's on your mind, Douglas? That what are you thinking? It would be quite simple. After a certain time, to marry a widow. Oh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. I will. That's why I'm Sunday next in the country. I have it planned. It shall be done in silence, neatly. Do you love me so much? So much. On the operating table tonight, I cheated death. I must make that up, you see. But you must tell me nothing. I must know nothing. You must. If only that I can be sure to trust you afterwards. Kiss me, my wife. And now, the second act of Suspense. And I am unable to pay my creditors until you pay me, Mr. Stone. Canetta. Whatever gave you the idea that you could invade my privacy after dinner in order to collect a bill? Only desperation, sir. Canetta, what day is today? It's Saturday. (laughs) Exactly less than a week has passed since I bought that pendant. Surely you're dunning me prematurely? A pendant? No, Mr. Stone. It's that brooch you bought six months ago. It's the bracelet you bought a year ago and all those lesser items in between. Well, Canetta, that's too bad, because I haven't a farthing at the moment. I should hate to resort to law, Mr. Stone. Where would that get you? In the debtor's jail, I could hardly do you any good at all. Now, get out of here and don't be a fool. I must be paid. Don't use that tone, if you please. Pim, Mr. Canetta is leaving. Oh, and Pim. Order my carriage brought round. Yes, Monsieur, Mr. Stone, it is urgent. Mr. Stone can see no one. But it is desperate. This is a matter of life and death. If you'll be good enough to wait in the consulting room. Thank you, I will. Tom? Oh, Pim. Bring me my tea at uh, half past eight in the morning. On Sunday, sir? Yes, if you will, on Sunday. What's this? A patient, sir, in the consulting room. Good heavens, no, Pim. Send him away. Look at the clock. I have an appointment. Hamid Ali, Smyrna. Hmm. A Turk, I suppose. I think so, sir. He's in a terrible way. He says it's desperate. Well, pack him off. And bring the carriage. Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. Oh, no, no, Please. This is Mr. Stone. 
Good evening, sir. You speak English, I presume? Oh, yes, I'm from Essio Minor, but I speak English a little. Yes, good. If you will uh, uh, do me the honor of returning in on Monday, I shall be glad Monday? to speak Oh, no, 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 even tomorrow will be too late. I'm sorry, I have an appointment. Mr. Stone, I come to you because only you can triumph over death. It will not take you an hour. The need is urgent. You must go with me. You must. Impossible tonight. I'm sorry. Mr. Stone, I do not beg you. I do not remind you of your doctor's own. There are these bags, 100 pounds, and I have a cab ready at the door. Pim! Never mind my carriage, and see to it that it's brought around at 9.15 in the morning. Now then, what is the case? Oh, it is a sad one. <laughs> so sad a case, I... If you please. Who is the patient? My wife. Oh, I'm sorry. You have not heard, perhaps, of the daggers of the Armogadis? Uh, never. They come from my own country. Uh, I have brought here. I am dealer in curiosities, you understand. And today my wife, she fainted in, in the room where I sent my wares. And then falling, she cut herself upon this dagger. This, this cursed dagger of the Armogadis. I see, and you wish me to bind the wound. Oh, no, 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 it is far worse than that. What then? The daggers are poisoned. Poisoned? All that is known of these weapons, I know. In all the world, there is no one anywhere, east or west, who knows what is this poison or what is its cure. And uh, what are the symptoms? A deep sleep. And in only 30 hours. Bed. Dear sir, allow me to offer you some brandy. No, I, I, I can't. You, you forget I am Muslim. We will not permit it. Uh, yes, of course. I beg your pardon. Uh, you say there is no cure. None. None. The poison is very slow to absorb. It remains in the wound for hours. Then might not washing cleanse it? Does washing cleanse the venom of a cobra? Of course not. This poison is a thousand times more subtle and more deadly. Then why have you paid me this considerable fee? No drop can cure. The knife, however, may. I see. My father always said, if there is evil, remove it. Certainly. Anything. Save a life. Think. Think that this is my beloved one. Think where the dagger poisoned her. Where? On the face. Are you quite ready, sir? Shall we go? This is the great hurry, doctor. Please hurry. Ah. All my life I've lived in London, but I've never seen this street before. What if your cabby is better informed than One minute, right, sir? Yes, if you please wait, please, for the doctor. All is well. She has had a left her friend. She has not spoken. She has not stirred. She is in a deep sleep. You see, the first working of the poison has begun. We cannot be too quick. Come follow me, Mr. Stone. But I'm not afraid. Forgive the Yashmak. Our women may not have their faces uncovered. This is the wound. Yes. It appears harmless enough. Death comes. And all innocents like the lamb. 
There are no signs of irritation. No festering. I believe we might better postpone the operation. Please, sir, to... sir, do not travel, I beg you. You do not know. It, it is deadly. I... Look, look. Here. This is the way. You see the discoloration of the venom on its spine. There is no time to lose. I pray you, do not speak of delay. I am still inclined to wait. Every second the end draws nearer. I cannot stand and watch while every heartbeat grows more faint. No, I thank you, Dr. Stone, for having come. It only remains for me to find another surgeon before it is too late. Very well. But please, you will let me have again my 100 pounds? I do not carry that much money with me. But, Mr. Stone, I, I, I gave you 100 pounds. You may call at my office tomorrow for it. Let me pass it, please. One other thing, Mr. Stone. My wife may die before I find another surgeon because you refuse to help her. We are in England now. I shall avail myself of the English laws. The coroner will be noted. Yes? I should be sorry if this should prove to you an embarrassment if your reputation should suffer. Good night, Mr. Stone. You have personal uh, experience of this poison? Oh, yes, I have, I have. And you assure me that an operation is absolutely necessary? I swear to you. I swear by all that I hold sacred. And you assume full responsibility? I do. I do. Please. May I ask, what is that? Chloroform for anesthesia. Oh, no. What do you mean? No, no, it is forbidden. Like the brandy you offered, both are spirits. But good God, man, you yourself said that this is England. Yes, no, no matter. I am faithful servant of Allah, the Almighty. But you cannot allow your wife to undergo an operation without her. No, 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 she will feel nothing. This, this is the deep sleep. Already also I have given her heavy dose of our smear in the opium. She will feel nothing. I beg you to proceed. You know, of course. I know. Her face will not be a pretty one to love. Please, hold the lamp for me there. Not absolutely unconscious. The opium has worked well. Do not fear. I pray you use the knife while it is still painless. Operation was absolutely necessary for me. Not physically, no, but morally. You swear, you don't! No! I wouldn't, Mr. Stone. I wouldn't. I'd long intended this little example. You now understand, I'm not the mild and doting husband who sees no evil or seeing evil pardons it. Evil breeds monstrous evil. We are proud men in my family. We do not easily give up what is ours. As you can see, I've been to some pains to carry out my little idea. The wound was caused by nothing more dangerous than my signet ring. Very.
appointment with her. After all... Take care of your business. Yes, sir. John. You see that the doctor is taken home first. He went leading downstairs, I imagine. Tell his butler he was taken ill on a case. Very good, sir. Then you can take Lady Sanox home. And how about yourself, sir? My address for the next few months will be the Hotel Daniele. Thanks. Oh, and uh, tell Stevens to be sure to exhibit the White Orchids Monday next. And telegraph me the results. I shall want to know. So you thought Venice would be safely distant? Yes, I did. But I was wrong. Evil breeds monstrous evil, you said, Lord Sanex, I believe. You might better have said evil brings punishment. Are you sure? Do you really believe that, Inspector Thomas? I have to. The doctor, Mr. Stone, has been put away in asylum. And Lady Sanex, heavily covered with a dark veil, does live long penance in a nunnery. And as for me? As for you, I believe you will be punished more severely than even they. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.